Good evening. It's time for another Cure for Conflict. This week, we'll be discussing the Southern Thailand insurgency. Let's start with history. The Angio Siamese Treaty of 1909 granted Thailand authority over the Patani region. By 1937, a process of Thaiification was set in motion by Marshal Plake Thibonsongram. The objective was assimilating Patani and other ethnic groups into Thailand. This led to a campaign started by Haiji Sulong, founder of the Patani People Movement. Beginning in 1947, the movement demanded Patani be granted autonomy, cultural rights, and more. Sulong was arrested one year later under the charge of treason and branded as a separatist. This did not discourage Patani, however. By 1950, the Patani nationalist movement gained tremendous support, eventually leading to the Southern Thailand insurgency. The insurgency has only grown from that point. By 1959, the first Malay rebel group was formed under Tengu Jalal Nasir. The goal of many of these national movements was secession from Thailand. Patani citizens wanted to live without cultural values from others forced on them. Patani saw a breakthrough in 1980 when the Thai government reversed its assimilation policy under General Prem Tinsulananda. Prem supported cultural rights and economic development in Patani and work with the Malaysian government to increase security around the southern border. The actions of separatist groups quieted during the 1990s, but have seen a resurgence since 2001 under Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawatrain's aggressive leadership. Thaksin tried to expand his influence into the Muslim South, an area under the control of his political opponents. This caused militant backlash. Thaksin also abolished many conflict management structures created under Prem. In 2004, martial law was imposed in insurgent provinces. This sparked two separate incidences that same year, the first in April, causing over 100 deaths. The second incident was a demonstration by Muslims outside a police station in Tak Bai in October. Taksin replaced martial law with an emergency decree in July 2005, giving authority back to the government. Unfortunately, Authorities used this power to restrict basic human rights and protect themselves from prosecution. By 2006, Toxine's control was weakened due to nationwide protests and allegations of corruption. The military was able to step in and seize control from him. His replacement, Surayud Shulanand, apologized for Toxine's policies, called for dropped charges against the Takbai protesters, and even re-established conflict resolution structures abolished by Toxine. However, the new policies instated since then have failed to produce meaningful results, and 2007 saw the highest casualty rate since 2004, with no signs of slowing down. While areas with strong insurgency presence continue to be placed under martial law, insurgents are still leading numerous attacks and are responsible for a countless number of deaths. That's all the time we have for this week. Please, like the Youth Channel Facebook page, Follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you next week.